All right, we are live on Facebook and live on Zoom. So if you guys are watching from home and you have our Zoom link and you want to join in that way, you can. If I can see your faces. And if you want to keep watching on Facebook and get the quality audio, then you can do that too. So uh, tonight's talk is uh, concerning the question of the week. The question of the week in the dojo is about making mistakes. And uh, I really like the question and the concept because making mistakes is something that everybody can relate to. If you cannot relate to making mistakes, you're not paying attention because uh, you're making them all the time. <laughs> so the question is specifically, we learn from our mistakes, so why are we always so afraid of making them? And where does that happen for you? Uh, this is a great t question on a lot of different levels. So on a, on a level that I always love talking about, this is about the ego, right? Where does this happen for you and why does it happen that you're afraid of making mistakes? It is, it is always the ego and, and it can be from a very uh, clear, you know, egotistical level, but also on a very simple kind of subtle level. So uh, making a, being afraid of making a mistake in front of other people or being afraid of making a mistake just in front of yourself is the ego saying, I, I don't like that I might be proven to be wrong about something. Human beings hate being proven wrong. We hate uh, more than, even more than other people seeing that we are wrong about something, we hate ourselves seeing that we're wrong about something because it feels like death. And there have actually been studies that, that show that like this impacts our mind in the same way uh, that, that actual fear of death impacts us. So it's, it's pretty messed up in here and out there. The, the more subtle uh, ways that being afraid of making a mistake uh, are all about the ego is just basically like, like any time that you find yourself uh, kind of stopped, even for a second. And it might not even fully register like, uh, I'm so afraid of this thing that I can't try it or I can't do it, but it's happening and it might just be like a blip. And it's, it's that split second pause, that, that tiny hesitation that might really mess us up in martial arts. I mean, that's all that it takes. That split second is the difference between I got out of the way and I got punched. And this is one of the reasons that meditation or, or that martial arts rather is such a brilliant uh, study of the ego is that we are brought face to face with it constantly and with real ramifications. Like real world, you know if you are up in your head or not because either you got hit or you didn't or you, or you hit or you didn't or you got the submission, you tapped or you didn't. Uh, this is, I think, such a, a hugely important question and such a beneficial thing to look at because you are going to make mistakes every day, constantly throughout the day. And some of them are little mistakes and some of them are big mistakes. And they are all wonderful mistakes if you have the right mindset. If you have the wrong, the wrong mindset, they are all terrible mistakes. And the wrong mindset is like, I'm, af I'm afraid of this and I don't want anybody to know, even myself, because you cannot learn from it if you're not uh, aware of it. If you are allowing yourself to be aware of it though, and you are really kind of eager to learn from it and to, to get the lesson from every mistake, then there is no bad mistake that you can make unless it's something that is literally so bad that you, you know, you die from it. You can't, I, I like to say, where I draw the line is, if your mistake is so bad that you can't practice martial arts the next day, then that was a mistake that you shouldn't have made. Uh, and still, some of us are going to make mistakes like that. Uh, and I've made so many. This is, this is how we all learn. This is how I learn. I, I think all the time about time, I, I, I hesitate to continue bringing up, you know, the idea of physical pain because those of you guys who are watching this who, who don't practice martial arts are thinking, well, I'm definitely not going to practice now. But I remember countless times where I'd be sparring and I'd drop my hands or I'd move in too fast. 
uh, you know, and I just take a, a front kick right to the face. And I never, my nose, you guys might have noticed this, is, is perfectly symmetrical because I've never gotten my nose broken. And I'm sure it's going to happen now that I just said that. But uh, I've, gotten, I've gotten punched and kicked in the face in, in every, you know, conceivable place. And I just got a nice, you know, substantial nose. So uh, those are the times where I learn. And uh, it's, it's also the times where I accidentally hit my partner. I, I remember one time, it was the, the most kind of bizarre experience I've ever had grappling. Well, I've had two very bizarre experiences grappling where I, I hurt somebody more than I wanted to. And one of them was practicing with Mr. Eason. Some of you guys know Mr. Eason. He's a, a really, really good. And he's, I, I believe, on his way to testing for his black sash with Sifu Donahue. And we were grappling one day, and his, his pinky just got caught in my pants. And, and I did like an oompa or something, and he went, oh. And then we looked at his pinky, and it was pointing like on a 90-degree angle. <laughs> and, and we just went, uh and then like pushed it back into place and he said, I'm okay. <laughs> and kind of like went out for a second. Uh, and I felt terrible about that. I, did, I almost had nothing to do with it. It was, it was pants. It's like, you gotta wear pants when you grapple and stuff's gonna get caught in it. There was another time I was grappling with, uh, with another student and I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now, but he was a wonderful senior student and uh, it was, it was just like I was in side mount and I just kind of moved my elbow and just barely hit him. I mean, I hit him like, like literally this hard right uh, above his eyebrow. And sometimes that's all it takes. And after a few more seconds of grappling, he was just like covered in blood. And, and it just like cut his, his eyebrow. Again, he was totally fine. I mean, he went to the bathroom and, and washed it off and we kept practicing like the next day he was back with a little bit of makeup to cover his his uh, black eye but it it is those it is the most subtle kind of lapses of uh, awareness and sometimes even with full awareness it's, it's going to happen I guess but we learn from these things and it's honestly it's those times that I kind of mess my partner up a little bit more than I wanted to that stick the most with me those mistakes, if it was literally just I bent a pinky in half or I gave somebody a, a bloody eyebrow and that was all that came from it, that would be kind of a bad thing. But uh, I learned from it and I have never done either of those two things again to anybody. So you're all lucky for that. Those of you who get to practice me, you're probably not going to get a bloody face or a busted pinky. Uh, but it has kind of propelled me to be more present, more in the moment, and to recognize that, you know, every single moment counts. Every single moment is an opportunity to be there or not. And if you are not there, it can result in somebody being injured in martial arts. But more importantly than that, it is, it is our opportunity to live or not. And this is really what martial arts gives us, is an opportunity to, to live, to be present for our life. And uh, this, is, this is part of what making mistakes and having the right attitude about them can give us. If we have the wrong attitude and it's like, oh my God, I did that to somebody, I bent the pinky, and I will never do this again. And or the, you know, every time I grapple from now on, I'm just deathly afraid of doing the same thing. That's not the kind of mindfulness that we're talking about. That is just, you know, further ego. I'm so afraid I'm worried about making this mistake. So we got to be able to let it go. Uh, making a mistake, it, it doesn't have to be all, you know, blood and gore. It can be something that is a lot more uh, fun and, and creative in the moment. So I've been talking about this a lot with the students this week in class. As you are uh, doing partner work, for example, so we're doing partner work where somebody is, is throwing a punch and then you're responding to it. Uh, in that moment, you can see the punch coming and freeze up and go, I don't know what to do. That comes from 
your ego's uh, inability to be okay with making a mistake. You can move. And look, your partner on, on the, you were doing this on Zoom right now, your partner on the other side of, of the city is not actually going to punch you in the face if you mess up. You go the wrong way and you go, okay, uh, I should go the other way next time. But uh, we still find ourselves kind of frozen and paralyzed by this fear of messing it up making the mistake, getting it wrong. And we got to recognize that this is a beautiful opportunity for us because when, you know, when this moment happens, you can be completely connected to it uh, in a way that the fear of making a mistake doesn't even come up. This is really what we're looking for in our practice on a deeper level is to be able to be in that state. So this is like uh, what Howry was asking me last class about the state of Mu Shin. If you guys don't know the wall scroll behind me, which I could not find a way of positioning my camera for you to see, <laughs> the wall scroll says Mu Shin, which is no mind, which is this state of consciousness that we're trying to get into with our practice that is possible, but only if we allow ourselves to set the ego aside. Uh, the ego can never get to Mu Shin. The ego can try really hard and, and really want to get to a deeper state of consciousness, uh, but the ego can't think its way into it. It can't get frustrated into it. It just has to uh, kind of melt away. And our practice gives us the opportunity to do that. Uh, sometimes we will go through frustration or we will go through very often this uh, fear of making a mistake and we realize I'm frozen right now because ego is here, okay, I'm going to let that go. And the way that we let it go is in meditation. We focus on our breath. Uh, we focus on the, uh, the way that our body is moving in our physical practice. We focus on our partner. And it's pretty much that, right? We, we recognize that we're focusing on our thoughts. That's ego. We let that go and we come back to focusing right here on exactly what's happening in reality. What is present for us? What can we be present for? And in that state, we don't get stopped. We don't freeze up. We don't go, ah, should I do this? And there's a certain, you know, there certainly are ways that you could take that too far and you could just be making all kinds of mistakes and not learning from them. You want to be present to it. But uh, if you're doing something that you've practiced a lot, like breathing, for example, if you guys haven't done a lot of breathing, I don't know how you're still here, but you're sitting to meditate and you can focus on the breath and there are two ways really of breathing. One way is, am I breathing right? I don't know. This feels wrong. I think my breath is too short. I think my breath is too long. It kind of hurts when I breathe. What's happening to me right now? How come I can't breathe anymore? As soon as I start looking at the breath, you know, that's what happens in that, in that state. Uh, the other way of breathing is to breathe, to let it happen. You're, you're just actually opening up and letting the breath come in and letting the breath go out. And you feel it like an outside observer. You are, you are not judging. You are not trying to manipulate or change anything. You are just being there with the breath. And it doesn't really matter if you're focusing on the sensation of the breath coming in and out of your nose or you're focusing on the, the way that your diaphragm moves when you breathe. Uh, you could even be focusing on the sound that your breath makes. But if you're able to attach to that uh, without judgment and without trying to fix it, then that is really what we're practicing. Being, being in the state of Mushin is, you know, without judgment. It's without a desire to fix. It is just being there, present. So with breathing... That the good news is you've done it enough that you can probably do that without needing to fix it because you've you've made it this far. <laughs> There's not a lot for you to fix, or at least you know you you don't need to fix it in order to continue to survive. Uh, the the problem is that once we start becoming aware of a thing then we do have a tendency to kind of get dragged right into that, that state of mind of I've got to fix it. So we experience this in meditation. 
Uh, whether it's I'm trying to fix my breathing or I'm trying to fix my mind, I notice that I'm, you know, I notice that I'm thinking too much, I feel like I have too much thought going on, and so I try to fix that. All of this fixing, all of this, again, it's like I'm worried about making the mistake in my meditation. I'm worried about making the mistake in my breathing. We've got to just be able to let that melt away. And, uh, if you are able to practice that in breathing, then you want to be able to take it to the next step. Do something that's a little bit harder than breathing. Something like, you know, a simple physical technique that you do in class. Uh, something like walking. You can do this like a walking meditation. But we will notice where our minds go. Our minds go right back to this concern. Am I doing this right or not? How am I messing this up? And then we just let that go. We let it disappear. And when you're able to do that consistently with simple things, then you're able to do it consistently with, with more complex things. And for sure, this is very important in practice because if you're stuck in your mind and you are trying to spontaneously create combinations or, or spar well, then stuck in your mind means you're too slow. You're not going to be able to do it. Uh, but this goes into other things that we can do. You could, uh, if you were a musician, I'm sure any of you guys that are very talented with music or, or any kind of art, you will have recognized that you have, you have been in this state, this flow state or mushin. And the reason it happens is because you allow yourself to get so absorbed in the moment of what you're doing. So... Uh, you know, you've sunk so much deeper than those surface concerns of, am I doing this right or not? Am I making a mistake? And in that state, you're able to uh, perform or create in ways that are incredible, in ways that you would have never been able to kind of think your way through or, or methodically try to make that happen in the moment. So uh, another way of looking at mistakes is that we want to have fun with it. And this is, you know, Mushin, we talk about it as being like a very serious kind of state of mind where I've got to be very focused. And that's true, you do have to be very focused. But you can be focused and still have it be fun. So if you are having fun with your practice and you are just allowing, your, you know, allowing it to flow through you rather than I'm trying to make it happen, that it, you're way more likely to find yourself in this state of mind or to, or, or to be of flowing with whatever it is that you're doing with your body too. And fun means that I might get hit and instead of beating myself up for it, I already got beat up, I don't need to beat myself up for it, I just kind of laugh it off and enjoy it. Uh, I, I will say so many times I've been sparring with somebody who, who hits me with something and in the moment I recognize, you know, my first thought sometimes is get pissed, get pissed at myself, get pissed at my partner, get pissed at martial arts in general. Why did this happen? I got hit. Uh, and it's, and that's ego. Or I'll notice the other way that my mind goes is I get hit and my first thought or my first uh, reaction, my first experience is of joy. And that might sound totally insane to those of you who have not experienced this before, but when you get hit by a sweet technique, there are very few experiences more awesome than that. Because you know that it's not that you were terrible and you were an, aw an awful person or an awful martial artist. It's just you got hit by it and like, whoa, awesome. Uh, this is, I've, I've told this story before. This was, um, this was, one of the first retreats that I went to, and it was Mr. Olinger, who's, who's a black sash. He tested with me uh, for black, and Sensei Hurt Sellers, who's practiced martial arts for many, many years. And at the time of this story, I forget it was 20 or 30 years that he'd been practicing. And they sparred together uh, on retreat as part of a demonstration in front of everybody. And they, they're both incredibly talented, and at some point, since they hurt sellers, landed just an amazing roundhouse kick, just like smack right here on the side of Mr. Olinger's face. It was perfect control. It was literally like this. And, and they kind of pause, and Olinger backs up, and Sifu Brown goes, 
Olinger, are you okay? And, and, and Mr. Olinger goes, yes, sir, that was awesome. And it, that was one of the first times that I remember seeing that because I was not at the point yet in my practice where I had experienced that. I was only at the point where I would get hit and I would go, oh, why is this happening to me? I hate martial arts. And, and when I saw that it was possible, then I started kind of allowing myself to have fun with sparring and to allow myself to have fun with grappling. And uh, I realized that getting beat or getting hit or getting tapped or whatever uh, can be a fun experience. And truly you have, uh, there, there are three energies. There's, there's my energy, there is my partner's energy, and then there's the energy that we make together. And when you are, when you are in this energy that you make together with you and your partner, uh, it's fun. You are both spontaneously creating, you're kind of dancing with your partner. And anything that happens, as long as nobody's seriously hurt, is, is fun and enjoyable. Uh, to be able to put ourselves in, in that place, it requires practice. You're not just going to go and spar for the first time and say, Sifu said that it could be fun getting hit. You're going to get hit the first time and realize that it takes some time and practice to be able to be there. But what it does not take is, uh, you know, anxiety or trying to force it to happen. You will not get there through this. You will get there when you let this go and you just allow yourself to be in the moment and enjoy, have fun. So all of that, you know, is, is all about mistakes on some level. We've got to allow ourselves to have mistakes, to have fun with making mistakes, and to recognize that, uh, Leah asked me a great question actually about this, which was like, I'm kind of confused. What, what is even a mistake? And on some level, it's like, yeah, there are no mistakes. I, my, my personal view is that uh, there is no such thing as free will. I believe that we lived in a, in a closed determinist system and, and there, every cause has an, e uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction and there's no way, and I could talk about that for forever, but uh, I, I believe on some level there is no actual way for, for you or anybody to make a mistake because it was something that you were forced into by your entire life and the whole universe leading up into this moment. But we don't have to talk about it on that level because you may or may not agree with me on that. What you can certainly agree on is if you make a mistake and you learn from it, was it really a mistake or was it just a thing that happened and an opportunity? And therefore the whole idea of mistakes kind of just like disappears from our consciousness if, if we recognize that whatever happens uh, is just a thing that happens and we either label it as a mistake or not. We label it as good or bad. We label it as whatever. Uh, that is adding something onto the experience that is not necessary and does not necessarily exist in reality. What exists in reality is there was this, and then there was this, and then that happened. And if we can kind of allow ourselves to be in that, in that state where we are free of judgment and free of labeling, uh, you know, whether something is good or bad, then we can just be. And, and this has such, such vast implications for the rest of life. If we are able to be that way in a conversation, you know, it, what would have normally turned into an argument, what would have normally turned into this, can now be like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, all this stuff that is going on in my head right now is all stuff that I just made up because it's ego, because I'm afraid of messing up this conversation, because of whatever it is. And, okay, I can just, like, actually be here with this person and listen and uh, have fun with this in a way that doesn't have to be me versus you. Um, so when I talk about acceptance, that's what that is all about too. So this is, this is what we practice on some level with our meditation is to truly be in the moment to the point where we are not, uh, stuck in this concern about making mistake. Uh, you're just literally breathing. The breath comes in, the breath goes out, whether it was fast or long, short, uh, you know, quick, um, a shallow inhale or a deep inhale or exhale, all of that is just what, what is. It doesn't have to mean anything else.
And then we try to take that into our physical practice, and then we try to take that into life. And when we're able to do that, uh, everything feels free. Everything feels light. Everything feels fun. And when we are able to do that, then uh, this is a totally different way of, of living. And we will find that we are able to be so much more creative but effective at whatever we do without being tied down or stopped by that fear uh, of making a mistake. So, as you meditate tonight, this is what you're going to do. Your meditation is going to be exactly what it is. And you're going to breathe in and you're going to breathe out. And we can all agree on that. What, what you are going to try to do is recognize everything else that you add to this uh, from a perspective of, I'm worried about messing up, I'm worried about making the mistake. And then as soon as you recognize that, just let it go and have fun with it. And maybe sometimes what you need to do is actually laugh at yourself because you're going to find yourself on some trains of thought uh, you know, about how terrible your meditation is or about how terrible you are. And you got to just laugh at it because that's the only way to let it go in that moment. So sit comfortably.